Welcome, this is the AP Physics Workbook Solution. Here we have Unit 7, Torque and Rotation. This section is 7.L, Angular Momentum. Here you can read the scenario for yourself. And here's the first question. The total energy of the star planet is shown here on the grid. The kinetic energy is above here. That is solid line and the total energy is down here. So, the first question. Suppose that it takes 1.25 years for the planet to travel around from point A to point B. So that is from A to point B. Let's just graph that really quick. From A all the way to B. That's what, two cycles. It says here it takes 1.25 how many years are shown on the graph well let's say so pause the video if you would like to try it I'm gonna show it to you so this is half so a full T right a full period would be 2.50 right how would that look like in the graph I said that the path from point A to point B is only half the orbit. To get the full orbit, you have to double it. That gives me 2.5 for the total orbit. Based on the graph, how many orbits is this? So you should see how it revolves. Okay. So this is one complete cycle. Up. It says Aptentune, then comes down to the trough. So this is one cycle. Right. So this here is one of the period. So T equals to 2.50. Then here is another one. This is another cycle. So the total cycle here is two full orbits of the planet. So two times 2.50 gets you five years. All right. Next, it asks half of 1.25 years is zero. 0.625 years does it take 0.25 years for the planet to go from point b to point c so it says from where it goes from point b to point c b to c okay so it says from here from here to go here and it wants to go here so I'm gonna just highlight this okay this is going to remind you of something of Kepler's law and let me just give you the notes okay so a line that connects a planet to the Sun sweeps out equal areas in equal time this is called the law of areas and this is one of Kepler's law this empirical law discovered by Kepler arises from the conservation of angular momentum. When the planet is very close to the sun, so this is the planet, and this is the sun right here. The planet moves faster, sweeping through a longer path given a given time. So the area here is the same area here. But it sweeps this faster, so this velocity is going to be greater. So the velocity here is going to be greater than the velocity here. Fellow city. Okay, so this is going to be greater, right? From Kepler's law. All right, so should it be 0 0.25? No, it shouldn't. It should not take 0 0.25 years for the planet to go from point B to point C. From B to point C. It shouldn't. The path from point B to point um, C is closer to the star, which is the sun. I just made a mistake here. So this should be C. It's closer to the star. Based on Kepler's law of area and conservation of angular momentum, when the planet is closer to the star, 
it will move faster, sweeping through the path in a faster time. Therefore, it should take less than 0.625 years for the planet to go around from point B to point C. Okay. If you want more information, you just have to watch a video on the law of areas, okay? And I think I already mentioned this in uh, the simple harmonic motion video, all right? Um, here, point C on the graph, sketch the graph of the potential energy of the planet star over the same interval. Draw your graph scale on the grid line, all right? So here is the energy here. Now you want the potential all right so the energy here so this is the energy and the first of all this is was the kinetic energy right but now you want the potential right they should average out so in the end it should be here if you if you draw it like this it wouldn't make sense it, it wouldn't make this line here Okay, the only way is that this is up how many? One, two, so this is one, two, so it goes like this. Uh, oh, shoot, Shh, let's see, is that right? Uh, tr I'm trying to mirror it as best as I can. All right, so it's basically supposed to be, it's basically reflected about this energy line here so think about it being reflected over the x-axis okay this is this has to be the potential energy so when these two combine it makes this flat line which is the energy all right then on point c on the orbit diagram draw a vector v representing the velocity of the planet at point C and draw a vector label F represent the net force. All right, so here's the planetary motion. All right here, let me grab a cleaner version of this, okay? Give me a moment. All right, so this is what I have. The force is going inwards and the velocity is going outwards, okay? This should explain this part all right okay if you do not like how it's worded let me just draw this to you okay this is the motion of a planet going around an elliptical force elliptical orbit there is always supposed to be a force um, towards it and then there's going to be adjacent to uh, tangential to the path is going to be with the velocity. So if this was this problem, it should have looked like something like this. All right. And this was where the star was. I think this was where the star was, right? Okay. Now. Let me draw you all the forces in great detail, okay? So, let's see. First of all, when it's super, super close, right, the A is super long, right? Super long, okay? As a result, the tangential velocity is super small, okay? As it keeps moving, it decreases it. So watch this. This is going to decrease, but it still points it, right? All right. Picks it up. Uh, towards A. All right, and we know that, and so notice how the acceleration decreases once it's farther away. This is its smallest acceleration, okay? This is when it has its largest acceleration. What's about its velocity? Notice the velocity is going to 
um, be super. Uh, this is John Rod. It's super long at the start. Now watch as it gets smaller. Okay, that's how it would look like for this object, right? Good. Does it say clockwise or counterclockwise? Counterclockwise. So this is wrong. It should be counterclockwise. Give me a second. Let me grab this and let me just rotate this. Nope. Give me a second. I'm just going to rotate it. Uh, rotate it 180 degrees. Boom. Is this counterclockwise now? Let me see. Is it counterclockwise? Hold on. No. So let me go. Ooh. Um, rotate flip horizontally. Uh, yeah, it's counterclockwise now. Uh, so all it has to do is sh the stars on this side. Okay, and the forces should change. All right. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So that's how it should look like counterclockwise. <laughs> All right. Okay. So good, good, good. Okay. Next point D. When the planets point C, the kinetic energy is decreasing. Using your vector point here, explain the case. All right. So again, when it's farther away, it should have less energy because it's slowing down. That's the reason why it gets pulled by the force of gravity back in. Okay. That's why it's smallest when it's farthest away. So let me answer part E here. So the planet follows an elliptical orbit has two major components, the tangential velocity and the inward acceleration of the force. From point B to point C, the planet just swung by the star and is heading away from the star. The object loses velocity from the velocity vector and F net vector being the obtuse angle so you should see an, an obtuse angle here and you should see how it's farther away the fact that it's an obtuse angle it is losing okay remember if it's acute right this adds so this increases it okay if it's parallel right it does nothing and if it's obtuse it subtracts, okay? That's vector, that's just ba basic vector analysis, all right? That's the reason why it speeds up. This is why the kinetic energy decreases as it moves away from the star, okay? So let me say here, so it's kinetic energy, okay? Just This is just kinetic energy, okay? So kinetic energy, okay? So kinetic energy here is small. As it moves here, it goes up a little bit more. And here, it has a lot, a lot, right? And it goes down, it starts decreasing, okay? It's like an oscillation. Let's go to the last one. Sketch and label the angular um, momentum of the planet taken about the star okay so how should the angular momentum be like all right so here's the torque and we talk about angular momentum and i want to talk to you right here about this idea the notes so just read it to yourself but i would like to point this out the law of conservation of angular momentum for a rotating object the total angular momentum of a rotating object must remain constant if the net torque acting on it it is zero final angular momentum is going to be equal to the initial angle angular mo momentum so in this case it is constant right does not change let me write you the explanation on why the net force of the planet is towards the star. The net force does not create, right here, the net force does not create a torque in the system because the force is directed at the rotational axis. The net force needs to be perpendicular to the vector pointing towards the planet to create a torque. So here I explain why the torque equals to zero. If the torque equals to zero, it applies the 
conservation of angular momentum. Because of conservation of angular momentum, we could say that it is constant. That is the reason why it's flat. It shows constant, right? Since there is no net torque on this planet as it orbits, the angular momentum of the planet remains constant through the orbit. Okay, there you go. All right, here are your notes on the law of conservation of momentum. This is torque if you need an explanation on what I mean by perpendicular and parallel. Here are your planetary motions. You should review Kepler if this doesn't make sense. This is the law of area by Kepler's law. It's the second law of planetary motion. It's called the law of areas. All right, here you go. But there you go. Those are your solutions and tutorial for 7.L.